Bees, nature's understated little helpers. Whether the sight of bees makes you run and scream, it is essential to realize that bees play a fundamental part of our everyday lives. Bees are responsible for a staggering 70% of the world's agriculture output through pollination. Ranging from the fruits and vegetables that we eat, the cotton we use for textiles, to the nuts and seeds we use to feed our livestock. And more prevalently, as of 2006, bee populations have been declining at dangerous rates posing a grave threat to our entire food supply. Bees go from plant to plant, collecting nectar to bring back to the hive. By doing so, bees are also unintentionally collecting pollen which attaches to velcro-like hairs on their body, which is brought to the next plant as they go along, cross-pollinating each plant. With the decline in bees, there was no possible way we could pollinate all the world's crops like the bees do on a regular basis. Aside from the hundreds of plants that would no longer be able to exist, livestock would also see a harsh decline. Take cows for example. Cattle are currently fed a diet of almond hulls and alfalfa. Both plants rely on bees to pollinate them. The decline in bees would in turn reduce the crops needed to sustain cattle, which would mean a reduction of meat and dairy. Ultimately, you would see less steak, cheese, and milk products in grocery stores. The same would also happen to other livestock products like chicken, eggs, and pork. The question still remains, what is happening to the bees that is leading to their decline? Simply put, the bees are just disappearing. This disappearance of bees is commonly referred to as Colony Collapse Disorder, or CCD for short. Colony Collapse Disorder is when the worker bees no longer return to the hive, leaving an insufficient amount of workers to maintain the colony. Without the workers returning to the hive with nectar, the hive starves. Traditionally, varroa mites, which fed on the developing bees in the hive, disease and long cold winters were the biggest threat to bee populations. In addition to these, a new threat has developed, a class of pesticides called neonicotinoids. Neonicotinoids are a recently developed and widely used pesticides sprayed onto farmers' crops to kill unwanted pests. The pesticide affects the central nervous system of pests, causing a detrimental confusion and disorientation leading to their death. Unfortunately, bees are affected by this pesticide as well. Affected bees are unable to find their way back to the hive due to deteriorating brain function leading to colony collapse disorder. Those that make it back to the hive bring back contaminated nectar, which spreads through the hive. Rural beekeeping is becoming more difficult due to the challenges bees are facing. A solution to maintaining bee populations is the idea of urban beekeeping. Beekeeping is generally done outside of cities. Urban beekeeping is a relatively new idea to conserve bees and so far it has been very successful. Statistics show that urban beekeeping is not only sustainable for the bee population, it is also vastly more productive in comparison to rural beekeeping. In any given population of urban bees, the bees are shown to have a 25% greater chance of survival and produce 9.5 more pounds of honey than its rural counterparts. Urban bees aren't exposed to the harmful neonicotinoids and also have a wider variety of plant nectar to choose from. Urban beekeeping is a beneficial practice both for the environment and its resources, but there is still opposition about bringing more bees inside the city. Horror stories of killer bees stinging children is far from reality. Bees have a small stinger that is used as the last line of defense. When a bee stings something, the stinger falls off, killing the bee. So a bee will only sting when it feels threatened, whether that's something threatening the hive or someone waving their arms around trying to hit it. A bee wants to sting you just as much as you want to be stung by it. It is usually the actions of the person overreacting to the bee that gets them stung. For those who are scared that bees will sting their children, instead of teaching your kids to fear bees, teach them to be respectful towards bees. Then you won't have to worry when they go to play outside. If you want to help save the bees, you are able to house hives on your property. Urban beekeeping in Winnipeg allows a maximum of five hives per property. To ensure the safety of people, fences will be required for hives on the ground level, needing to be set back six meters from the edge of the fence. Hives that are on rooftops in the suburbs or downtown, or 2.4 meters above the ground do not require a fence. Additionally, all that is required is to complete a course in beekeeping and to register as a beekeeper with the province. The bees are disappearing and they need our help. We're asking you to open your minds and change your perspective on bees. Bees are a major role in our daily lives from the cotton on our clothes to the plants and animals on our dinner table and the ecosystem around us. Bees are not going to sting you just because they see you. Bees die when they sting you. They just want to do their job and make honey. It's up to us to make sure our actions don't make the bees go extinct.